Prophet Muhammad migrated to Medina in the year of 622 AD. The original name of the city is Yathrib, which was built by the Jews who had been living there for about a thousand years. There were three major Jewish tribes in Yathrib. The first one was Banu Nadir, with their leader Huye bin Akhtab. He was the father of Safiya binti Huye, who later became the wife of the Prophet after the Jewish Kabar robbery. The second tribe was Banu Kanuka. The third one was Banu Kareza, with their leader Kaab bin Asad. The references of this story were taken from the life of Muhammad by Ibn Ishaq, pages 453 to 466. History of Al-Tabari, Volume 8, pages 34 to 36. Go ahead download these two books from the links below. The Jewish community in Yathrib accepted the Prophet and the Muslims from Mecca as respected guests. They never attacked or forced the Muslims to leave their city. Conflicts happened after Muhammad wanted to force his faith, Islam, on the Jews and their religious leaders. As expected, the Jews rejected Islam, let alone acknowledged Muhammad as a prophet of God. Since then, hatred started to emerge in Muhammad's mind against the Jewish people. Evil Quran verses toward the Jews began to appear in Quran, for example, Quran, Surah Ali Imran verse 85 states that no religion except Islam is accepted by God. Surah al maida verse 33 orders Muslim to kill, beheaded, crucify, torture those who dare to disobey Muhammad. Surah al maida verse 51 orders Muslims not to befriend Jews and Christians. And many more similar verses. Muhammad then attacked the Jews from Banu Nadir and Kanuka. After successfully defeating them, he expelled all the people from those two tribes from Medina. The only Jewish tribe left was Banu Kareza. The Prophet had been longing to slaughter all of them. But, before that could be done, the Quraysh army from Mecca came to attack the Prophet and Muslim soldiers in Medina. This event was known as the War of the Trench or Kandak War. To prevent the Quraysh army from getting closer to Medina, Muhammad ordered his army to dig a long trench in front of the city. Although there were conflicts between Muhammad and the Jews, the people of Jewish Kareza still helped the Muslims by supplying them with war equipment and shovel to dig trenches. But their goodwill did not change the evil plan in Muhammad's mind. To understand the story better, let's follow these illustrations. After the Kandak war was over, Muhammad returned to Medina, to the house of Am Salama, who was one of his wives. Am Salama, prepare some water for me to wash my hair. Yes, Rasulullah. While washing hair, Muhammad was thinking. I better use this opportunity to get rid of the Jewish Banu Kareza once and for all. He quickly met Ali bin Abu Talib. Ali, Jibril instructed me to attack Banu Kareza. Tell the soldiers not to do Asar prayer and march straight to the fort of Banu Kareza. Yes, Razalala. Muhammad rode his donkey, with 3,000 Muslim soldiers marched behind him. When they reached the fort of Banu Kareza, they started to besiege it. The Jewish soldiers watched from their fort. Muhammad yelled at them. You brothers of monkeys, has Allah disgraced you and brought his vengeance upon you? The Jewish soldiers replied. Oh, Abul Qasim, you are not a barbarous person, right? They mocked Muhammad because they thought it would embarrass him with his harsh words. After that, the Muslim soldiers attacked the Jews with archery. But their effort was pointless. A Muslim soldier approaches the fort too close. A Jewish woman cast down a milestone from the fort. The milestone fell on the Muslim and killed him. Muhammad was very angry to see this. They will pay dearly for this. The Muslim army continued to besiege the fort for 25 nights. Inside the fort, the Jews started to feel the pressure. We have no more food now. We cannot stay here any longer. Huye bin Akhtab, the leader of Jewish Banu Nadir, was in the fort to help his friend Qab bin Asad, the leader of Jewish Banu Kareza. It is clear that Muhammad would not leave us until the end of us. It seems that way. The Jewish people starved and frustrated. I don't have anything to eat for my children. I have the same problem. Qab bin Asad said to his people. Oh Jews, you can see what has happened to you. I offer you three alternatives. Choose which one you please. We will follow Muhammad and accept him as a prophet from Allah, and then your lives, property, women and children will be saved. 
We will never abandon the laws of the Torah and never change them for another. What about if we kill our wives and children and send our men with their swords to fight Muhammad? If we perish, we perish, and we shall not leave our children behind us to cause us anxiety. We cannot kill our children. How can we live when they were all dead? The last suggestion is we attack Muhammad by surprise tonight. He would think we won't do that because tonight is the Sabbath. We will not violate the Sabbath. Not a single man among you from the day of your birth has ever passed a night resolved to do what he knows ought to be done. Qad bin Asad send a messenger to Muhammad. Go to Muhammad and ask for Abu Lubaba from Banu Awas. The Banu Qurayza were the allies of the Awas. The Jewish man met Muhammad. Please send us Abu Lubaba, so that we may consult him. Fine. Send Abu Lubaba to their fort. Abu Lubaba and the messenger came inside the fort. Jewish women and children went up to him, crying and weeping. O oh, Abu Lubaba, do you think that we should submit to Muhammad's judgment? Yes. Abu Lubaba moved his hand across his throat, signifying that Muhammad planned to slaughter all the Jews. Abu Lubaba left the fort. The Jewish women and their children cried hysterically. The Jews made a proposal to Muhammad. Tell Muhammad that we are willing to evacuate our territory and move to Adriat with the protection of Banu al-Awas. But Muhammad rejected the request. No, you have to abide by my judgment. When Cobb heard about this, he knew he had not much option. We will surrender to Muhammad in the morning. In the morning, the Jews of Banu Qurayza surrendered to Muhammad. The Muslim soldiers chained the male Jewish prisoners and kept them in the fort until Muhammad decided their fate. The people of Banu Awas was in good term with Banu Qurayza, so they asked Muhammad to have mercy on the Jews. O Messenger of Allah, the Banu Qurayza people are our allies. They are not allied with the Khazraj tribe. In the past, you forgave the people of Banu Kainuka, who were allies of Banu Khazraj. Will you be satisfied, dear Awas, if one of your people pronounces judgment on them? Yes, we will be. Let's ask Sa'ad bin Muad to decide the judgment. All right. At that time, Sa'ad bin Muad was dying, almost dead, from being hit by an arrow from the Quraysh army in the Battle of Kandak. The Awas men approached him. Sa'ad, Razalullah would like you to meet him. We all agree that you make judgment for the Banu Qurayza's fate. They mounted him on a donkey to meet Muhammad. Sa'ad, be kind to our Jewish friends, for the Prophet has appointed you to be the judge of their fate. They didn't seem to know that Sa'ad was a Muslim who hated the Jews. Sa'ad bin Wad met Muhammad. Oh Sa'ad, these people have agreed to accept your verdict. Sa'ad knew that he would die soon, and he wished to take as many unbelievers as possible with him to offer to Allah Almighty. I judge that their warriors should be killed and their women and children should be taken as captives. Everybody shocked to hear the verdict. But Muhammad was very happy with Sa'ad's decision. You have given a judgment similar to Allah's judgment. Jewish women and children were separated from their husbands and male relatives. The wealth of the Banu Qurayza, as well as their livestock, was taken out as war booty for the Muslims. The Muslim soldiers threw away Banu Qurayza's wine and liquors. Long trenches were dug along the marketplace of Medina. About 800 to 900 male Jewish prisoners were divided into groups of five or six people. Children who have pubic hair were considered grown up and will be prosecuted as well. Hadith Sunan Abu Dawud No. 4390 explains this event. I was among the captives of Banu Qurayza. They, the companions, examined us, and those who had begun to grow pubic hair were killed, and those who had not were not killed. I was among those who had not grown hair. Ali, Al-Zabair and Muslim soldiers sharpened their swords. Muhammad sat down in front of the trench to watch the execution. The History of Al-Tabari, Volume 8, Page 35 The Messenger of God went out into the marketplace of Medina and had trenches dug in it. Then he sent for them and had them beheaded in those trenches. One group of prisoners was taken near the trench. They were forced to kneel down. Ali started to beheaded their necks. Other Muslim soldiers followed his action. 
The heads fell into the trench. In the meantime, another group of prisoners was taken near the trench. The Muslim soldiers beheaded them one by one. The Jewish women screamed, crying hysterically. The Muslim soldiers began to drag the boys away, while their mothers tried to restrain them. Children of 10, 11, 12 years old were beheaded as well. A Jewish woman who killed a Muslim soldier with a stone mile was also beheaded. A Muslim named Thabit ibn Qais tried to save the life of a very old Jewish man named Az Zabir. You saved my life in Buwath War. I will ask the Prophet to spare your life. Thank you, Thabit. Thabit ibn Qais meet Prophet Muhammad. Oh Rasulullah, please spare Az Zabir's life and his family since he saved mine in Buwath War. Prophet Muhammad reluctantly agreed to spare Az Zabir and his family's lives. Fine, set them free. Thabit ibn Qais returned to Az Zabir with the good news. Rasulullah said that you and your family are pardoned. But what about my leaders? I prefer to die rather than live without them. There is no mercy for the Jewish leaders. Then I ask you, for the sake of the favor I once did for you, to let me join my kinsmen, for by God there is no good in living after them. I will not wait patiently for God to meet my dear ones. You would rather die now? I will not wait patiently for God to meet my dear ones. As you wish then. So Thabit brought Az Zabir near the trench. Fine, set them free. Qiyye bin Khattab, the leader of Banu Nadir, was taken to the execution field. Remember, he was the father of Safiya binti Huye, who later was forced to become Muhammad's wife after the big robbery of the Jewish Kabar. Huye and the Jewish community came to realization that they had been deceived by Prophet Muhammad, who appointed a dying Muslim to dictate their faith. But it was already too late now. Then, he kneeled near the trench. The Muslim soldier beheaded him. In just one day, between 800 and 900 Jewish male captives were beheaded. The History of Al-Tabari, Volume 8, Page 35 They were brought out to him in groups. Among them were the enemy of God, Huye bin Akhtab, and Ka'ab bin Asad, the head of the tribe. They were numbered 600 or 700, the largest estimate says they were between 800 to 900. The affair continued until the messenger of God had finished with them. After the mass beheadings occurred, Muhammad took one-fifth of the loot of war. This part is mine. Prophet Muhammad chose a beautiful Jewish teenager named Rehana bint Zaid to be his concubine, after he tragically made her a widow by beheading her husband in the trench. Would you like to marry me? Nay, leave me in your power, for that will be easier for me and you. Prophet Muhammad was not happy with Rehana's preference to be his slave and not wife. Not only did he annihilate my entire tribe, but now he also expects me to serve him in bed? It's beyond belief. Divide the rest of the booty among yourself. Muhammad divided the rest of property, women, and children of Banu Qurayza among the Muslims. Let's sell them to make a lot of money. We will be rich. Muhammad called Sa'ad ibn Zaid. Sa'ad. Take some of the Jewish women and children and sell them in the slave market in Najid for horses and weapons. Yes, Rasulullah. According to Hadith Sunan Abu Dawud 3946, the price of slave at that time was around 800 dirham or $5,000. By having slaves of a thousand Jewish women and children, the Muslims gained a lot of wealth from this jihad. Muhammad succeeded in ridding the entire Jewish community of Kanuka, Nadir, Kareza from Medina. He also managed to confiscate all their land, property, women and children. I came here with nothing, but look at what I have now. This means a guest came and was respected, but he later killed the host, robbed the house, and enslaved his wife and children. Now Muhammad became a powerful warlord who was feared by many in Arabian Peninsula. My terror tactics work out well.